Hello everyone! We are playing some more Cinderella Phenomenon! We are continuing Fritz's route. So let, let's see what goes on here. We did discover last time that Fritz is uh, Varg or Vorg. And it looks like we're like already at like end game plot stuff. So it'll be interesting what it does from here. Should make a me of him and make him go on a date with Kirumi. Or more like Kirumi. Exactly. Thanks for calling him Vorg. <laughs> or have him hold hands with Nalia. That would be good too. Make a me of Nalia, have me hold hands with him, and then have me bench press him. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like suplex him into the wall after I give him a kiss. Cause when it comes to Nalia, I'm always like, God, I love you. I wanna make out with you so bad, and then I'm like, God, I wanna kill you. <laughs> I read it as create Elio and go on a date with Kirumi. <laughs> Alright. He comes to an abrupt stop and glares at the door that blocks his straight path. His hand is outstretched as if he meant to reach for my door. I'm like, why am I going on a date? No, no, I'm the one going on a date. I'm the one going on a date. Suplex so him into the wall after giving him a kiss. You, you just described the perfect date, Elio. <laughs> For, for a million dollars, I can go on a date with you and suplex you. <laughs> Elio's going on a date. Our bun is made in full. <laughs> I wish. Rod? Emily? It's so late. What are they doing out of their rooms? Rod's fingers tighten over Emily's hand. They both look exhausted and Emily is on the verge of tears. What's happening? Uh, Rod seems to consider something before he finally comes to a silent conclusion. His eyes glare right into mine. Get out of the way. Rod's voice is colder than usual, even for him. Emily's eyes widen as she stares at him in shock. Yeah, why are you being such a bee at me? What did I do? Other than everything I did? Uh, before I had the curse inflicted on me, but like, I'm, I'm a different person now. Rod, but I thought... This isn't the time. Oh, so here's where the rabbits escape. <laughs> yes, I'm right here! Hello! This is where I escaped! Hi! Hello! <laughs> Someone is gonna comment on Elio and there's a kiss. And then Elio suplexes them through the very same wall. Hell yeah! Hi, Varg! <laughs> See, he knows I'm here. He knows I exist. He's probably talking about Rod, because he's got a, a rabbit. But I like I like to have the headcanon. He's saying, I'm the bunny that escaped, and he's come to, to grab me and put me in his cage, his ooh cage of love. That, like, if it was Varg, I wouldn't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly go into the cage if Varg's the one that caught me the cage. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate ID. <laughs> Varg is slowly making his way over to us. His posture relaxed, expression indifferent. He does not even look winded. Damn, Bunny is thirsty. Jesus, Ellie, I was half joking. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Tired, Coma's, Toma's cage. Wired Varg's cage. <laughs> like, fuck Toma, but Varg is different. Well, this is a complication. Oh, oh god. Do I help them? I. See, we're villain root, right? So should I not help them? You were half serious? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move. I move without realizing, putting myself in between Varg and the two siblings. Oh, Lucette. No! Emeline reaches out to pull me back, but I dodge her grip and turn back to Varg with a glare. Is this the mission? How very unladylike of you to eavesdrop. What are you going to do to them? It's none of your business, princess. And why do you even care? Why do I care? <laughs> wow. Because... 
They're my family? Because I know this is not some order Fritz would take. Okay, uh, that too, I guess. Bark hesitates, giving Rod time to act. Rod throws a vial that breaks upon impact with the floor. It releases a cloud of smoke that envelops everything around it. Oh, I guess I should ask, because I notice the game volume is a bit low for me, uh, personally. Uh, how does the game volume sound for you guys? Can you guys hear the soundtrack all right? The little dun 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 sounds. I feel someone's fingers at my wrist, and then I'm being dragged away. Kind of low? Okay. Let me turn it up a bit. Actually, I don't think that impacts that, so I'll do the output. Alright, let me know how it sounds now. Kind of vial won't break when it's thrown on the floor. One's made out of Nintendium. They never break. I feel someone's fingers at my wrist, and then I'm being dragged away. <gasps> Is Vark holding my hand? When my vision clears, I see Emmeline standing before me, holding my wrist tightly. Oh, it's Emmeline, but I mean, I don't mind that either. No Kiyom? Yeah, no Kiyom could be that too. A lot of down bad clips came from Cinderella phenomenon, so yes. Yeah, I feel like, like, the rate of, like, other game to Cinderella is like 1-1. One, one. Like every time I simp for someone in a different game, it's just like, okay, next Cinderella phenomenon stream, I'm gonna be simping. <laughs> and come on! What was that? It is something Lady Parfait made for our escape. Her escape? Did you really think the March Hen gave up on you? I... We must move. I I would have given up. Like, I'm kind of an asshole. <laughs> we run towards the palace tunnels, a place I have not visited in many years. I thought they barricaded this. Not quite. Do you think we've lost him? No, not yet. Emmeline turns to me, her eyebrows drawn over her eyes in a look of sympathy. I'm so sorry you got caught up in this. I know that we were all meant to escape together according to Rod, but we were not expecting it to be like this. <laughs> I love my title, Elio Simpudan. The C in Elio is for chastity. Oh, cause I have no chastity because I don't have the letter C in my name. Is that is that the message here? Huh? It was difficult to get a help. A hold of you with Varg hanging around. But you were very brave back there. Thank you for what you did. I did not do anything. Yes, you did. And it was very good of you to do it. When you have no reason to help us. Yes, thank you for explaining. Ugh! I'm suddenly uncomfortable speaking to her, so I turned to face Rod instead. Her being twy. What does Vark want with you? My best guess is that he wants us dead. Yo, I'm first up in line. I want to be the first one killed by him, please. That... That can't be... How else would you explain the way he came after us, Em? But why would he want you dead? Rod's bright eyes seem fiercer in the darkness of the tunnels. Oh, is it cause Yandere? Like, like he's killing them because they, like, they don't like me or something? I don't know. I think it must be what his master wants. After all, dogs only respond to orders. But he said he's not a dog. He said he's not a furry. He's a scaly. I'm offended, Prince. I always was more of a Bowserkin. You. Once again, I move instinctively to shield Rod and Emmeline with my body. Varg looks at me, his eyes glittering with amusement. <laughs> Is he a cat? Well, I guess he's like a wolf, maybe? Elio. <laughs> when did you become so brave, princess? Listen, listen. <laughs> 
called Charizard Heart. You're the scaling. I did not intend that when I said that about Charizard, but I will contend here with the scaly thing for Bowser because Bowser is hot. I, I will, I will admit 100% to that. Okay, like Charizard, only hot in the fact that his fucking tail is on fire. Not like attractive hot, but Bowser? Bowser is hot, and I'm not talking about Bowserette or whatever. Bowsette, I'm not talking about that. People that only sent for Bowsette and not Bowser are pathetic. You think Bowser is a dilf? I do! Charizard isn't even a dragon. What is he then? A lizard? Yeah, he's a, he's a lizard. Yeah, he's a lizard. But yeah, like, Bowser is really attractive. I, I, I don't know, something about him, something about him. And like, he's a caring dad and everything. He, he's got his, he's got an open heart. He, he's feeling empathetic. He's a furry. <laughs> he does vor. Like, what, what about Bowser is unattractive, honestly. I don't understand Princess Peach. She's missing out. She's, she's really missing out, honestly. Missing out on a hunk of man. When did you become so brave, Princess? I keep my eyes fixed on him as I speak to Rod and Emmeline. Go. But... <laughs> <laughs> I love your emotes, Jackie. <laughs> Go now. Come on. I turn back to Varg as the two flee. My body tenses as I wait for Varg to move. The fact that no one's spoken up in chat after I said that stuff about Bowser actually makes me worried. <laughs> like... I will stop him, or at least buy them some more time. It's like when you're talking with someone in Discord and then you say something embarrassing and like right when you hit embar like like wait right, right when you hit send on the embarrassing thing you see that your friend is typing, but then they stop typing and you see that it's because they're reading what you sent. And then the silence is a bit too long, like you know they would have started typing to respond. You know, you know that feeling? And you're just like, wait, why, why aren't you responding? <laughs> Insert cricket noises here. <laughs> it reminded me of that. I have no idea how long we stand there, frozen in place. You never cease to amaze me. So, what's going to happen now? Were you going to kill them? He's not answering. Does that mean I'm right? Is this what Sir Alcaster ordered you to do? Why else would I be here if not for an order? Maybe because you want to? Why would he want you to kill Rod and Emmeline? And why does he want you to kill the king? It's a me, Symphio. <laughs> I knew, I knew that was why you didn't respond. You were making a clip of it. <laughs> you overheard quite a bit, huh? I'll be back in a bit. All right, see you in a bit, Twy. <laughs> Probably a little more than you should have. The tension in the air becomes palpable as it becomes harder to breathe. Varg's fingers tighten on his cane. He wouldn't hurt me, would he? Varg moves for a few moments. I'm frozen with terror. Then a word I had forgotten long ago suddenly comes to my lips, unbidden. A word that Fritz once told me before. These nuts! Adiova! Close enough. This time, it's Varg that freezes. He raises his cane, but it never comes down. His eyes are wild, even though he hasn't moved. Suddenly, he looks as if he's restraining himself. I can see the struggle on his contorted expression, and then I realize that he's fighting to stay in control. Oh, is it like a, a trigger to like switch between Fritz and Varg? It worked. I remain still for another moment, my mind racing. 
Varg drops to his knees and I see shadows forming beneath him. Tendrils of darkness snake their way up his body, beginning to engulf him. I mean, I, I also was thinking that that's a way to explain the, the hair color change, I guess. <laughs> this is what happened last time when he changed back into Fritz. There's still awareness in Varg's eyes, however. His gaze is cold and accusatory. It remains that way even as the shadow creeps their way up his face. I find my feet again and rush past Varg into the depths of the palace. I run, too frightened of what I might find if I look back. Ooh. Are you alright? If you are truly worried for my safety, then you should have told the king how unsafe it is for me to leave the palace. Isn't that a knight's job, Sir Fitzgerald? Do you have so little faith in me? What? Don't you trust me to keep you safe, princess? Three years ago, when I swore that I would give my life for yours, I meant it. I still do. Ah! And I would take people's life for you, too. I would never let anything harm you ever- Yeah, <laughs> he's a Yandere. He's definitely a Yandere. Maybe he's like a- Okay, there are, there are multiple le levels. There are multiple layers of the Yandere onion. Uh, chat. Not every Yandere kills people. To protect the person. They can just be very protective to where they can evolve. So like, Fritz right now is like a baby Pokemon. He's like a Pichu. He's all like, I will give up my life to protect you, keep you away from harm, but I will not kill people. But then he evolves into a Pikachu when he decides to kill someone. So yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know why I started explaining. Perhaps I need to make another promise to you, princess, so that I may ease your worries. Remember this carefully, okay? Adiova. What does that mean? It's from an old language that no one speaks anymore. It's what people used to say when they were calling for help. Something to call when I need help? If for any reason I'm not there and you need me, just say that word. Scream it at the top of your lungs if you need to. I promise I'll come running. Oh, that's why he changed into Fritz. Oh. A knight would never break a promise to his lady. Ah! That, that like, melts my heart a little bit. There's something about, like, okay, like, the these, like, series where, like, a character, like, doesn't have control over themselves anymore. They're all, like, it's impossible. They're too strong, I... I can't, like, go back. I'm too weak. But then, like, someone says something and they snap out of it and then immediately take over. Because that, that person means so much to them that even if they were weak, they, like, bolster up the energy and power to overtake everything because they just care so much about that person. Ah! God. Trust in me. <laughs> <laughs> that song quit crying. <laughs> I have to go. Hmm. God, Fritz is so good. I've been awake for hours, unable to sleep. I stand at my window, waiting for something, anything to happen, but all is still beyond the glass window pane. I have no idea what I ought to do. What's going to happen now? Should I tell someone? I return to the palace because my room still feels like the safest place, but... Why? Am I here because I feel I need to tell the king what happened? Because I hope that Fritz will return? Yeah, this person has a lot of Zongli emotes and they have child follower emotes, lol. Ooh. Oh yeah, those are some really good emotes. But yeah, Fritz is a good bean. He is very good. I I think he's my favorite. I had a feeling he would be my favorite because, like, I always fall for the childhood friend archetype, and he's got, like, that, that little hint of Yandere-ness in him, too, that I really like, so, oh, I really like him. <laughs> I don't even know if the king is still here. I haven't seen him, seen him at all. My hand instinctively reaches out for my necklace, and I realize that there's an additional piece. Oh, I did a good deed! 
I look down and a small gasp escapes my lips when I notice a new piece of the glass slipper. Oh, was it? Also, I just realized. <laughs> Hold on. I just realized something. I never got the crystal from earlier. So let me, let me load my save file. Okay, so I'm supposed to help them. I wasn't sure since it was villain root, but is this the mission Sir Alcaster was referring to? Rod tugs at Emmeline's wrist to prompt her into motion, but the two of them are too slow. But yeah, like, <laughs> like, okay, hot of a boyfriend, favorite characters, Yota, and then I bought the game because of Shu. So like, the undead attracted me, the, the childhood friend kept me around. <laughs> And then like Ukyo, I really like Ukyo and just uh. Childhood friends are just bangers because they're they're always there for you. That's the thing. Yeah, Hot Tuffle Boyfriend does have a sequel, Holiday Star. I also played that one. I really liked that one because it put in a little dash of extra characterization to Ryota. Uh with like there's okay, I don't know if I should talk about spoilers or not. Uh but there's one bad ending that involves Ryota that I really like from Holiday Star. I actually used to call, not cosplay, I used to roleplay like on, on Tumblr as Ryota, specifically for the Ryota that results from the bad ending. Cause I was like, <laughs> I love it. Childhood friends is the good shit. Yeah, like a lot of the times with like other characters and like Atome games and stuff, they're not you're, like your childhood friend. They're just like, hi, I'm here. Oh, you're not playing my route? Fuck you then, bye. But like, the childhood friends are always there for you. Unless they're like assholes. There's like only one asshole childhood friend so far I've seen from like an Otome game that I can remember. And that was period cube. Because your, your childhood friend in that was a tsundere. And he got angry at you for like being friends with people other than him. And he kind of like guilt tripped you. And I was like, I don't like that. I'm surprised. I'm surprised I don't like the childhood friend, but it was because he was kind of an asshole. But like, typically they're always there for you, even if you're not playing their route. They're always like, yeah, I'm always here to support you. And like, there's always like that underline, like, yeah, they've had a crush on you for years. And like, either they suppressed those feelings or like they knew you would never return those feelings. And so they're just like, I'm just happy being here with you. And that shit just like, Oh, that, oh, I love that. A badly handed Sundere truly ruins everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only liked one ending for him and that was because it was the bad ending. <laughs> I tend to really like bad endings in Atome games because they tend to go young daddy. <laughs> Elio cosplayed as a bird, what? No, I did not cosplay. I just RP'd, like, I role played. Uh, Ryota on, on Tumblr. <laughs> I didn't cosplay him. In one swift movement, Vargas circled them and tripped Emmeline, toppling her to the floor. Also, I'm so angry. That just reminded me of something. I don't know if you guys were around for like the, the Hatful boyfriend Kickstarter. I'm still so angry at myself for not buying the Ryota body pillow. Because not only was it a body pillow of my favorite character, Ryota, from Hatful Boyfriend, but he was wearing his maid outfit! He was wearing his maid outfit! Life ain't fair! I need that body pillow! Varg moves forward to grab her, but before he can so much as touch her, I jump into action, pushing Varg from the side. Someone made a mod for SMT4 Apocalypse? What kind of mod? I move to stand between Emmeline and Varg, I can hear Rod helping his sister up, but my eyes are trained on Vark. What is this? Femme mermaid. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? Women love me. Fish fear me. If, if this ain't in Soul Hackers 2 as an alt for Mermaid, then just this. Oh, whoops, wait. Is there another one? Okay, no, it's the right one. It, it's the same thing. 
Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Guilty Gear Strike finally has Bridget, yes! And didn't they confirm that Bridget is confirmed trans now? I I'm very happy for Bridget. Is it bad that like, I've been considering rewriting backstory for OCs because I made up an AU where they were childhood friends but like, one of them is Yandere? Please, do it, Jackie. You, you want to do it? Do it. That, and like, that sounds like some good food. That sounds like some really good food, Jackie. So like, you want to do it? Do it. <laughs> That's like, uh, I, I had these OCs that I just made to be like, uh, little mascot characters. They're just like little panda dudes. But then I was like, I inevitably make everything I touch fucked up. So I made the guy be like a failure of an experiment and that he has the chance of going wild and killing everyone. But since he's in love with the other girl, he wouldn't kill her. But he also has like a, a conflicted feelings towards her too. And I'm just like, bro, you were trying, you, you just wanted to make fucking mascots. Why did you do this, Elio? You can't have a single good thing without making it fucked up. I thought Bridget has been trans for a long time. Yeah, they're just making it official. Yeah, Bridget is officially trans after messing up her writing for the longest time. Yeah. As of Strive, as far as I know. Her backstory in writing was yikes. Yeah, I remember some stuff like... Wasn't there some bits with like an x-ray being performed on her and stuff and like... There was like one character that was into like little boys or whatever. That was another thing that was brought up for her and the, everything. And I'm just like, that's a yikes. But I'm happy for her. She's living her best life. I may have to stand between Emmeline and Varg. I can hear Rod helping his sister up, but my eyes are trained on Varg. No pedals in Guilty Gear, no. Blame Tekken and their throwing family members off a cliff. I don't read backstory for fighting games. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Guilty Gear. I, I haven't played a single Guilty Gear in my life. So, like, all the info I know about Guilty Gear is, like, from other people. So my memory of it is, like, non-existent. <laughs> so all I know is what I read. What are you going to do to them? But I am happy. I am happy that they've confirmed that she's trans. Why do you care? The extra is because the character is a doctor and tends to use medical related gimmick moves. Oh, I see. Okay. Only Guilty Gear I played was. Z How do you pronounce that? Zerd? Exerd? I played. There was one on the Wii, right? I think I played that one. Like, once. At, like, a Japan club meeting. Why do I care? Because I know this isn't something Fritz would do. Varg hesitates, giving Rod time to- I Oh yeah, I can skip now. I can skip. But yeah, I always- Oh, there we go. Thank you for what you did back there. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't helped us. Alright, let's skip forward. But yeah, I always wanted to get into that game and Skullgirls and... Well, there's a lot of fighting games I want to get into, but the thing is I'm bad at fighting games, but I like the story of fighting games. I don't know. I think that makes me a weirdo because most people play fighting games for the fighting game part of it. And everyone always complains about the story. But the things that interest me are the characters and story for the fighting games I saw, so I'm probably the weirdo here. This was meant to be quick. Varg looks at me, his eyes glittering with amusement. Play SNK Heroines for Weird Story. Is that the one where, where Terry is a girl? I remember I went to like Anime Expo when they had a SNK Heroines booth. And like me and my cousin posed with like two people cosplaying SNK Heroines characters, like the, the main girl. She was really cute. The girl that cosplayed her was really cute. And so is Iori. Oh, Yeah, I always wanted to get that game again. Especially because I saw it at the anime convention. But I never did. <laughs> that 
as always, you complicate things, princess. Also, why is that not an alt costume for Terry in Smash? They missed an opportunity with that one. Girl Iori is called as Miss X. Huh. I cannot hide how much I'm trembling, but I still hold out my arm to protect the siblings. Go. Not without you. Go now. Aw. Okay, that, that slight little change to the plot since we helped them. Having them saying, we're not going without you, because like, when I answered incorrectly, they were just like, okay, bye. <laughs> Alright. A new piece of the slipper. But how? What was my good deed? I remember the night I helped Rod and Emmeline escape from Varg. That was a good deal? G good deal? <laughs> deal or no deal? That was a good deed? Princess? Fritz? I've been looking for Prince Rod and Princess Emmeline. Have you seen them? My eyes are beginning to sting. I'm startled when I realize that there are tears burning my eyes. Yeah, because he doesn't remember. What's wrong? Varg is gaining control, slowly but surely. He no longer has to wait for Fritz's consciousness to descend into sleep. In a few weeks, perhaps even days, Varg may be able to help us during the day. Can I even trust Fritz now? Fritz looks at me with worry clear in his face. He draws closer to me, his hand reaching out for me. <laughs> I pull back immediately, my breath caught in my throat. Princess? Ah! Uh... For a moment, I just saw Varg. But to be honest, I didn't how to feel about Bridget being officially trans. Not that I'm not happy for her, but hmm. It's complicated considering the past 20 years since her initial release. <laughs> yeah, from what I remember, wasn't the whole reason that, like, Bridget... Didn't Bridget have, like, a... See, I'm not familiar with Guilty Gear, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. My information might be wrong. But wasn't, like, the backstory for Bridget that, like, uh... Bridget had a twin, and like, Bridget had to like, dress up like, like a like a girl because of uh, the twin or, or something. Or like, I think it was like, only females could be part of the family or, or something like that. What's Varg's deal? Jafar-esque character? Varg is like, so Varg is like, um, hard to explain, but it's kind of like, um, a split personality, uh, from Fritz. So, like, whenever he's in control, uh, Fritz doesn't have any memories of being Varg. Twin boys equals bad luck superstition in village. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, the former. There was a superstition about same-gender twins. So his parents raised Bridget as a girl. Her? His at the time? Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how good or not it is, since I haven't played the games, so I guess I have no opinion. <laughs> What's going on? Will he believe me if I'm straightforward? Yeah, yeah, he's like, he's like Jackal and Hyde, kinda, yeah. And like, I think Varg was like, a part of Fritz's personality that was dark, that got like, magically enhanced by a witch to, like, become its own personality, I think? So that, like, the evil guy could use him to, like, do his deeds and stuff. Yeah, Bridget was always pretty vocal about being a boy until, like, today. So I am also having trouble adjusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense why people are conflicted over it. Princess, please, I... Fritz clenches his hands into fists. His face twists with obvious pain. That's kind of like a problem I have whenever I watch, uh, Dot Heck Sign. Cause like, uh, Sukasa and Dot Heck Sign is very vehemently, I am a boy. I am a boy. I am a boy. And then like, uh, 
the characters find out that he's like defab at birth and they're like, you're a girl. And then he's like, no, I'm a boy. I'm a boy. I'm a boy. Uh, and then he has the whole, I'm conflicted. I don't know, you know, what what's right. Cause, and I thought that was, you know, gender dysphoria kind of thing. Like everyone, like born girl identify boy thing. But then at the end, Sukasa just, He's like, okay, am girl. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. Like, the fact that he would get upset over it and everything, just, ugh. Sounds like you got shin dysphoria. Oh, hi there, Kurama! I'm a fox, hello! Fritz is a jackal, Varg is the high, got it, yeah. I guess it's just how the whole transphobic memes was born from Bridget. Like the pulling a Bridget phase, and it sucks, man. Mmm. Been here since papers, please. Just lurking. <laughs> well, nice. Thank you for lurking. I hope you've been enjoying the stream. But yeah, I I understand why people feel awkward about the the Bridget situation. Like, I personally am of the mind that Sukasa is like trans dude. So like, I get really upset. <laughs> When I see any canon stuff that's like, oh, I'm a girl. Just because I felt like his whole experience in Sign was very much just gender dysphoria. And it felt like at the end they were just like, oh, we'll throw it out. I do really want to be happy about Bridget, though. Yeah, it's nice to get trans representation. But another thing to keep in mind is also just how you do the trans representation that also matters. Like, I mean, look at Disney. Look at Disney and they're, we are the first gay ever. And then they have one character that appears for like five seconds. And then they shop out that character for the Chinese release. And they're like, you're not, not giving us anything. You're just pandering to us. <laughs> the news was dropping like as it was happening. And I wasn't sure. You're just trying to figure it out. Wow. Oh, true. Bridget literally came out yesterday. <laughs> Bridget do be vibing, the player select screen. <laughs> no more Elio. Anyway, where's the Shane costume? Oh, shit. That's right, you redeemed Shinny mode. Swata! Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I got, I got distracted. I got distracted. Here's your stupid Shinny mode, dwarf. What did the witch have to gain from releasing Varg? So the witches are evil, and, uh, Main girl here, uh, Cinderella, aka Wuset, uh, she is the daughter of the Queen of the Witches, and the Queen of the Witches controls the Darkness Orb, the Tenebrarum, and when Lucette turns 18, she'll become the new bearer of the Tenebrarum, which is in a couple of days, and the witches want to start more wars and be evil and, you know, inflict more curses on people. And Fritz is a good bean, and he wants Fritz to not be a good bean. So the witch was like, I, I'm gonna curse you so that you're a bad bean. And I'll make you capture Lucette. And I'm gonna use your affection for her as a way to manipulate you, kind of thing is the vibes I'm getting. I have several more redeems of it if I need it. Here's the in-game clip of confirming Bridget's gender here if you'd like. Ooh. Isn't today Vore Day? <laughs> it is Cat Day, but also Vore Day, yes. Need more characters vibing in character select screen. Or mongering. Why am I not surprised? Yep, yep. We evil, so we cause war. Please, let me help you. Press F to doubt. Okay, I'm gonna let him help me, because I, I trust Fritz. I'm gonna let him do it. Isn't today war day? Things I'm not surprised to hear. <laughs> Welcome back, Twy. Today is what day? It's war day. It's also cat day. Fritz, I don't know how to explain. He slowly moves towards me again. Start from the beginning. Fritz carefully slides his hand over mine. Yo, that's lewd. I can trust him. Right? Fritz, you're... You're cursed. Pr 
princess, you've been worrying about me? There's no reason for you to be concerned about me. Neither of us have actually seen this curse in action. I mean, I have, actually. <laughs> You're cursed with a separate, cruel personality. It's one that's been scaring me, and... And last night, Varg, I mean, you, were going to kill Rod and Emmeline. His gaze is a confused muddle of worry and doubt. You don't believe me. I don't trust you, princess. I'm just... I do not doubt you, princess. I'm just confused. Sorry, I misread that. <laughs> How could I not know about the existence of an alternate personality? Or about a curse inflicted on me? Because you forget about it. You don't have any memories of being him. I pull my hand away from him and cross to the other side of the room so that my bed acts as a barrier between us. Oh, shit. Did my stream... Did my internet just go out? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. I don't have Twitch pulled up on my phone. Oh, no. Sorry, YouTube. My internet just dropped. Yeah, you sell you the data. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. Huh, okay. Uh looks like my internet is down. <laughs> So, I'll just splice this together with another Cinderella Phenomenon stream sometime, because my internet is down. Uh, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah. I'll, I'll see you in a second, YouTube, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, you guys ready for more Cinderella Phenomenon? If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, this is gonna be spliced together with the last stream, but if you're watching this on Twitch right now, well, uh, welcome back. Sorry about the internet issues. <laughs> alright, uh, can you hear me alright? Can you hear the game alright? I just turned it on. Let me know. Let me know, chat. But yeah. Um, I'll probably go... You sound fine. Okay, good. Yeah, I decided not to do Groove Coaster uh, this stream and instead just do Cinderella Phenomenon and then Little Nightmares. Maybe I might play Groove Coaster after Little Nightmares? I'm not sure. Well, we'll see. We'll see how I feel. Alright, let's continue from where we left off. Uh, I'm not sure when it dropped, but this was when I noticed that the internet dropped, so... Uh, if any stuff was missed, it'll it'll be in the YouTube uh, upload because I was still like I was recording locally <laughs> when the internet went down. <laughs> okay, I pull my hand away from him and cross to the other side of my room so that my bed acts as a barrier between us. Okay, so I, I forget when it dropped, but Lucette's trying to tell Fritz that like about Varg. And, like, Fritz kind of doesn't understand her. Like, he he just doesn't see, like, you know, he doesn't understand because he has no memories of it. <laughs> but Varg knows you. How is it possible that Varg is so aware of you when you don't even know he exists? Well, I think that's because Varg is, like, a branch off from, Fritz, from Fritz's personality. So he still has, like, memories of like, being Fritz, but I don't think Fritz has memories of Varg. I begin to pace, my emotions whirling. And how am I to trust you when you won't even trust me? Oh. You were supposed to believe me. How could you not? Why do you think I would lie about this? Last night, I thought Varg was going to kill me. And I used that word you taught me because I felt I was in danger. 
W what I said it, and he stopped, and I thought that maybe it was you who heard me say that word. I, I think that was it, though. His words become tar in my throat, choking me. Oh, wait, the words. I can't read. I trusted you. Fritz's eyes are dark as he drops his gaze to look solemnly at the ground. But I think, I, I think he did come to protect her. And now? Now I don't know if I meant to. Oh, sorry, was getting a drink of water. Silence descends upon my room. When I finally look at Fritz again, the man I see is a stranger. Gone is the Fritz that I once knew, and standing in his place is nothing but a shadow. I thought he'd be different. He showed me so much kindness and pretended to care, and yet... Mother was right. Mother was always right. No! No, Fritz does care about you, and... <laughs> I feel a dull ache in my chest as I turn on my heels to look away from Fritz. This is what happens when you trust in someone. This is what happens when you begin to believe in others. No! Stop thinking like that. Yes, thank God. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. I was kind of hoping that he would hug her. I gasp when I feel strong arms wrap around me from behind. God, the facial expressions here are really good, too. I can feel Fritz's warm breath against the back of my neck. It sends shivers tumbling down my spine. Let me go, Fritz. Ah! I forgot what the key was to... Yeah, I wanted to look at that. <laughs> also, casual... Uh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> but, like, the positioning of the arms is just so he doesn't touch her booba. <laughs> I order you to let me go! But Fritz only tightens his grip, while the warm embrace is suffocating. It's also oddly comforting. Sorry, princess. I cannot be ordered to leave you like this. I swore an oath to you and made a promise to myself that I would always stand by your side. <laughs> no matter how much you push me away, I will always be here for you. Ah! From the day I was assigned to you, I saw how much you suffered. You noticed that so quickly, Elio. Where are you looking? Oh. <laughs> you caught me. I don't know, my my eyes naturally gravitate to booba, I guess. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, oh, he's not touching the booba. <laughs> I mean, he's a classy man, unlike me. <laughs> That's why I will protect you with everything that I am. I bite my lip as I struggle to keep myself from crying. How can I trust Fritz's words when Frag has done nothing but cause suffering to everyone around me? But it seems like I've also been the one to cause you so much pain. He loosens his arms until I'm no longer within his embrace. God, I want Fritz and Ukyo to meet so bad. <sighs> I suddenly feel cold and empty, but I do not move towards Fritz again. His voice is very soft when he speaks again. I'm sorry. Vargas caused nothing but suffering. Well, wow, big talk, Lucette. <laughs> yeah, who's done three good deeds yet, huh, Lucette? You've only done what? One? And that was last night? I did not look up when he leaves. You cannot rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot trust anyone but yourself. How can I have forgotten that? No, please, don't. Lucette, please don't be manipulated by your mom. Ooh. Nice, nice splash screen. If I had been able to have my way, I would not have left my room at all. After everything that's happened, I don't think I want to know what Sir Mithros' request is. I'm also worried about this so-called wonderful gift he wants to show me. Oh, that's probably the Tenebrarum. Perhaps he means to kill me, along with the king. Uh, well, he intends to do something similar to what happened with the girl and the dog in, uh, <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist, most likely. 
See, I, I think... I, I'm not sure if it's possible to bring back her mom from the dead, but maybe he can, like, force her soul out and put his her mom's soul into her body? That That's what I'm guessing is Mithros' goal. Human transmutation? <laughs> yes. Surely I should be more alarmed at this epiphany. But if there's one thing you should learn from <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist, it's don't try to do human transmutation to bring your mom back from the dead. <laughs> Wait, witch transmutation? <laughs> oh, that's true. They are both witches. So, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe there won't be a tragedy if that happens. Yeah, for some reason, I only feel numb. I don't acknowledge Varg when he enters the room. Princess. I'd ask what you're ta thinking about, but it's written all over your face. Yeah, I'm thinking about you, baby. That and I happen to have the memories of it too. Oh, okay. So, I thought all along Varg's, you know, memories of Fritz were before the split between Varg and Fritz. So he just has all memories of Fritz, but Fritz has no memories of Varg. Okay. If it's a 2003 version, then the resulting homunculus will be less set. <laughs> Yo, I wanna... Ooh, I wanna see Lucette like less. That would be... Ooh. Poor princess. Your knight in shining armor turned out to be less of a hero than you thought. Hmm? Stop it. It hurts, doesn't it? Well, I did tell you. I wonder why you're so surprised. Varg, you... I think you're annoying our princess, Varg. Yo, when are you gonna make out with me, Varg? Come on! Sir Mithros' presence, for once, is actually a relief. <laughs> In one of the endings, Fritz seemed to have Varg's memories, I think. He was saying he's gone, presumably talking about Varg. Huh, maybe like... Maybe when he becomes in control, like... And Varg leaves, he gets his memories of him? Maybe. I don't know. From one problematic character to another? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Okay. He bows to me, but I no longer believe the smile on his face. Princess, you have my most sincere thanks for agreeing to meet me at such late notice. I mean, where else am I gonna go? It's not like you guys are gonna let me out of the castle. What is it that you want to show me, Sir Mithros? Actually, answer me this first, as it has been troubling me for some time. Why do you want to kill the king? I see we have much to talk about. Let us walk and talk, if you do not mind. Sir Mithras looks at Varg. No! Spoilers! Oh, no! Do not disturb us, Varg. <sniffs> Varg disappears back into whatever shadow he'd emerged from, as Sir Mithros and I make our way back into the hall. You gonna show me my mom's corpse? That would be awesome. Can I poke it with a stick? It seems my suspicions were correct. You did overhear Alcaster and I the other night, didn't you? Princess, I must assure you that I have nothing but your best wishes at heart. Are you sure about that one, Chief? It is not I that wishes to remove your father from power. That is Sir Alcaster's desire. Yeah, but I don't think you want me alive. I think you want my mom to be alive and to use me as a catalyst. Is this what Jurian spoke of all those months ago? Did she discover Sir Alcaster's motives only to be discharged from the Order as a result? Hmm, maybe Jurian's not a bad person after all. Maybe the people at the march aren't bad. Ever think of that one, Lucette? Why did you agree to help him? I required Sir Alcaster's assistance for certain things. It was a mutually beneficial decision for both of us to work together. But do not worry. I never had any intention of going through with your father's murder. Well, maybe you won't murder him, but 
I think you're okay with someone else getting murdered. Like, someone else doing the murdering. Is this why you were delaying him until after my birthday? Sir Mithras' smile is almost genuine. I don't trust you. My princess is wise, just like her mother. Don't compare me to my mom. I know what you think of my mom. Ugh. I realize that Sir Mithros has led me into the secret tunnels. Yo, this was where Rod Kabe donned me. You're not gonna Kabe don me, are you? Look, maybe if this was before I played Rumpel's Rue, I would be like, Oh my god, you gotta Kabe don me? But not now, Mr. Where are you taking me now? My princess is also impatient, just like her mother. Stop! Stop comparing me to my mom! Doesn't... Don't compare me to my mom doesn't need a justification, Elliot. Yeah, true. Just... Comparing yourself to anyone always sucks. It always sucks to be the person that's being compared to someone else. It's like, I am not this person, you know? Like, that person is their own thing and I am myself the impudence of this man you said Varg answered to you but he also carried out Sir Elcaster's orders it was Sir Elcaster's desire to take over Angiel as cleanly as he could he sought to accomplish that by killing all those with a claim to the throne so Rod and Emmeline but I was never going to let him kill you. In exchange for ensuring your safety, Sir Alcaster required, among other things, a servant. So I provided him with one. Sir Alcaster needed someone that could remain close to him, hidden in plain sight, so to speak. He also required that they have the skills of a trained knight. Ah, so you just made one out of his son, huh? Sir Fitzgerald was capable of guarding you, my princess. But he was not as capable of carrying out Sir Alcaster's orders. Uh, oh, Alcaster's other orders. But why go to such lengths to curse Fritz? Princess. Yeah, what's the curse even? Can you please tell me? Sir Mithros focuses his intent gaze on me. Something dangerous and bright shimmers in his eyes. I shrink back. Any threat to your life had to be removed. Ooh. Also, I don't know if this was intentional on, like, the Mithros designing part, but I just noticed that the stuff on his, like, what is it called? A dovet? No, that's a bed. The, the little, the little Edgeworth thing. And, like, the little cufflinks on his, like, shirt look a lot like the crystals that you get when you choose a right answer. What's the curse even? Twitch chat? Fritz has been inflicted with Twitch chat curse. Now he will say, Mother, I hardly know her when I open up to him about my trauma. <laughs> Besides, I am under the impression that your loyal knight would be happy to sacrifice part of himself, nor did he become the perfect guardian. <laughs> Ooh. What do you gain from doing all of this? I require something from you, something only you can provide. It is something I had to wait for, as you need to be 18 in order to give it to me. Uh, I've been preparing this gift for you for a long time, my princess. It is the gift of resurrection. Okay, but... Uh, you gotta explain this to me a bit better. I will bring back the queen. But how? You're not gonna use my body for it, right? What? Will you help me? Ah! I don't know. I don't know. Like, now, now there's the whole conflict in my mind because this is Fritz's root, but it's also Vard's root. So, I, I don't know. I really, I really don't know what is the good answer here. Like, I feel like. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Tell me what I must do? The mother can be brought back? How is this possible? The queen has been sleeping to heal the injuries inflicted upon her during the Great War. 
It is a fabricated death. Had I not been there, your mother may have truly been dead. Oh, okay, so she's not... So she's not really dead? But now the time has come for her to wake. But you are the only one that can open her eyes. How can I do this? Oh, is it like Tenebrarium related? Is that why? My princess, you are heir to more than just the kingdom of Angiel. Queen Hildir was the bearer of the Crystallum Tenebrarum, one of the two Crystallum of Angiel. What? As her daughter, you are the next bearer. You are destined to be a great witch, just like your mother. Yo, what is this? Final Fantasy, the, the crystal bearers? My mother. A witch? Impossible. Crystal Bearers is a really good game, by the way. Like, it's probably one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, just in general. But apparently my taste in Final Fantasy games is bad, so... I probably shouldn't talk about my taste in Final Fantasy games. You know, I didn't even react to you calling me cursed. <laughs> you just accepted it, huh? <laughs> You're just like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm cursed, alright. Understandable, have a good day. It is the truth. You are so young then, my princess. And the world was so cruel to you. Yeah, because my mom intentionally made the world be cruel to me. Why do I not remember any of that? Basically, yeah, hollers and background answers. And based on fact, Fritz only gives a shit about Lucette. Oh! So maybe... Okay. I'm guessing that's wrong then. So let me go with, uh... My mom. Mother is dead. Mother is dead. Only in name. Mother has been dead for years. If she had been alive, I would have known. Okay, I just gotta answer this. I, the answer, okay. I just gotta answer this as in all of the questions are related to a Yandere and whether they want me to like, like only focus on myself and my wants and desires. Okay. Your mother sustained great injuries during the Great War. She needed time to heal. And then, where has she been? And why would she pretend to be dead? Okay, what happened here? Uh, what was the last thing you remember uh, about the root kippies? And I, I can try and explain from there. Elio called me cursed and I held back tears. <laughs> why would she leave me alone? Your mother is sleeping and you are the only one that can wake her. Why me? Okay, let me skip forward here a little bit. Why do I not remember any of this? The Queen sought to protect you and shrouded your memories of the pain you suffered at the hands of humans. I felt like long ago, when they were out there and Varg became Fritz again. Okay, so, uh, there was like a moment where they were bringing Lucette to the castle, and, uh, there was Rod and Emmeline, uh, in this tunnel, uh, with Lucette. And Varg showed up and tried to kill them, but uh, Lucette shouted out a word that apparently Fritz told her in the past that if she's ever in danger to yell out and no matter what will happen, Fritz will come to save her. So when she yelled out that word, uh, Varg changed from into Fritz. And then like Fritz was all like, wait, what, what's going on here? And then... Uh, they were able to get Rod and Emmeline to escape. Yeah, he tried to kill those two, uh, cause, uh, he, like, is working for, uh, what was his name? Uh, Big Nose Man, who's Fritz's dad. And Fritz's dad wants to kill the entire royal family so he can become king. Uh, but yeah, Lucette wanted them to escape and Fritz came, and they were able to escape safely, so they're not dead. Uh, and then they went back into the castle to Lucette's room, and Lucette tried to explain to Fritz that, like, he has an alternate personality called Varg. 
but like Fritz didn't believe her because he doesn't have any memories of her, like of any memories of Varg. Uh, and so, you know, Lucette got upset, started being like, this is just what my mom said, not to trust in anyone. Like, Fritz isn't even gonna trust me, so like, what's the point in trusting him? So like, she tried to leave, but then Fritz hugged her and said that he would never leave her and is trying to understand the situation right now. Did that count as a good deed? Yes, it did. So she has one good deed now. So yeah. That's what, what's been going on here, and now we're meeting with Mithros, who is apparently telling us how we can revive our dead mom. <laughs> is this why the people of Angiel despise and fear me? But once you turn 18, you inherit the full abilities of the Tenebrarum Bearer. With that power, you can revive your mother. I heard mating with Mithros instead of meeting. <laughs> no, never, never, not in a million years now. He he blew his chance with me being a simp for him. Fuck you, Mithros. <laughs> I used to be a simp, not anymore. Is this not what you've been dreaming of since you lost her? I dared not even dream this was possible. For many years, all I wanted was for Mother to return to me. But now? No, I cannot falter. People die when they are killed. Mother was the only person I could trust. She's still the only person who loves me. Uh, Fritz would like to have a word with you? <laughs> Hi there, Arctic! Here's your, here's your bunny ears. La cha cha cha. Cha -cha -cha. How you doing today? <laughs> Hope you're having a good day. I have made my decision. Tell me what I must do. Sir Mithro smiles and steps aside. Behind him is a large rusty door. Don't trust a man that looks like this with that eyebrow raise. That that is not that is not a good facial expression to have. That is like, I am about to commit atrocities on this world when someone looks like this. Come with me. Nalia. Okay, I'll believe Nalia. Okay, Nalia is the only bitch in this house I will respect <laughs> if he looks like that. Okay, so is she like inside a crystal? Booba. Mother! She's still as beautiful as the day she became one with the Tenebrarum. Shut up! This art, yeah, this is really pretty. Sumithros so fervently strokes his hand against the Tenebrarum as if caressing Mother's face. Ugh! Get out of here! These last four years, I've come to visit her as much as I possibly can. Oh, oh my god. I don't want to know what you've been doing in here, dude. Knowing what you think of her mom. I cannot wait to see her beauty grace the halls of the palace once more. Sir Mithras turns to me. Place your hands on the Tenebrarum. Mommy? I mean, Lucette's mom. <laughs> Lucette's mom is a <laughs> certified mommy. Wait, before I do this, Sir Mithros, you said you have no desire to kill the king. Yes. Swear to me that you will not allow Sir Alcaster's plans to succeed. Swear that you will protect the lives of the royal family. I do not wholly understand why I'm asking this of Sir Mithros, yet a part of me feels compelled to do so. I may not see them as much of a family, but they have done nothing to deserve death. My princess. Swear it. Very well. I swear I shall not allow Sir Alcaster to kill any of the royal family. I'll just curse them instead. The clock tower chimes. The bell echoes in the chamber. The sound dulls and e the sound dull and eerie. Sir Mithros's eyes flash as he gestures his hand wildly. Now, princess, now! The air in the room becomes cold. So cold, I actually feel my body becoming like ice. 
Wait, okay, so did she just turn 18? Something is wrong. This does not feel right. I try to move away, but my attempts are thwarted by some kind of magical force. The Tenebrarum is pulling me towards it! Sir Mithros! It is too late to turn back now, princess. No! I knew this bitch was gonna do something! The pull is strong. I'm drawn to it like a magnet. The invisible force renders me a puppet. It takes hold of my body and forces me to raise my hands to the crystallum. I press my palms against the face of the tenebrarum, my hands framing my mother's face. Her expression is gentle in her unnatural sleep. The tenebrarum is freezing beneath my fingertips at first, but it steadily begins to warm as the clock continues counting down to twelve. The warmer the tenebrarum grows, the colder my body feels. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's sucking the life out of her, isn't it? It feels like it's sapping all of my energy. Like the tenebrarum is feeding off me. I knew he was gonna try and, like, take the life out of Lucette to put it in her mom. Ugh! The pain starts slowly. It creeps up and out until it's flooding my entire body. I attempt to twist my body away from the tenebrarum surface, but my hands are stuck. It's like when you lick a piece of ice and your tongue gets stuck. Ugh, ew, this guy. Yeah, seriously, dude. I turn to Sir Mithros for help, but there's nothing but crazed glee in his smile. You know what they say, never trust a guy whose name starts with e M and ends in THOS. Yes, yes. His eyes are focused on the crystallized form of my mother. I become dimly aware of the tears that are beginning to fall from my eyes. I cannot go on like this. My vision starts to blur until I feel myself falling into endless darkness. I can't imagine being Lucette and having this sus guy being so intensely into my mom. Seriously, like, uh, Lucette, I'm sorry, you should have known from Mithros' obsession with your mom that he was not, he was not a good guy. Mother? Yes, my sweet? What are you doing? I am planning, dearest one. Mother has to be ready for when she takes over Angiel. But doesn't father rule Angiel? Oh, sweet. Father will soon be too tired to rule. Mother will rule for him. And when you are grown, you shall follow in my footsteps. I'll make Angiel a kingdom to behold, my darling. Yeah, you're gonna fuck over the kingdom, you mean. You will never be hurt, and no one shall deny you anything. The people will bend to your whim and will behave as they ought to. There'll be no bad people? No, dearest one. There'll be no bad people in our kingdom. I'll make sure of that, because you'll be the bad one. <laughs> oh, I can't. I just can't. The, the manipulation of Lucette's mom just really upsets me. Opening my eyes and moving my body is a struggle is a struggle, <laughs> a struggle, a struggle. I feel sluggish and numb, and there's a suffocating heat in my chest that makes it difficult to breathe. When I finally do rise, my thoughts are tangled and confused. Where am I? <gasps> what? Oh, Mark's got the mask off. Ooh, she lives. I turn my head just in time to see Varg rise from a chair just to to the side of my bed. Has he been sitting there watching me? And... He's not wearing his mask. What are you doing here? You've been out for a week, princess. A week? I think I would know how long you've been playing Sleeping Beauty. What, have you been at my bedside while I sleep holding my hand and watching me? I hope so. Because I actually really like, I really like that trope of someone being sick or, or passed out and the person that loves them, like, even though they're not waking up, they just stay by them no matter what. Oh, 
After all, I've been here the whole damn... Aha! Nice, okay, he did do that. <laughs> Bark quickly clears his throat before gazing down at me. An exasperated expression on his face. Elio, why are you still simping for him? Hey, Bark's not that bad, okay? <laughs> Educate when it'll happen, the animal death trigger warning. Oh, re oh shit. Also, Varg. Oh, th thank you for warning me ahead of time, Jackie. Do you even remember what happened? Memories suddenly flood through my mind. They are fragments, but together they create a startling picture. You said the same with Mythos. Listen, I learned. I learned. He doesn't have a root for one. Mitros doesn't have a root. So they there there's no redemption from him. But if I've learned anything, it's if you're able to date him in an Atome game, they're fine. Unless you're playing something like, I don't know, Bad Wolf Saga or something, because like <laughs> that that game is made intentionally for people that like problematic characters and they're like, yeah, these guys are assholes. It's a good thing that game never got translated in English. <laughs> Sir Mithros in a room. Twelve chimes of the clock. My 18th birthday. The Tenebrarum. And... Mother! I sit up immediately, only to succumb to a wave of nausea and dizziness. Much to my surprise, Varg reaches out to study me. His grip firm but gentle. Slow down, princess. You're not ready to fight me yet. What time is it? Almost dawn. Will he become Fritz again in a few hours? Or have I lost Fritz forever? Would you believe me if I told you Fritz doesn't want to see you? Oh? The awareness of my last conversation with Fritz hits me full force. Oh shit. After what happened the last time we spoke, I'm not surprised that Fritz does not want to see me. He was too ashamed to face you. I had no idea Fritz would react the way he did to your words. I have most of his stronger memories. Not all of them, but most. Okay, so he doesn't have all of his memories. Only really strong ones. I thought he'd have most of mine too, but I guess that's not the case. Yeah, we still don't know what his fairy tale is. I'm very curious about it. What memories do you have? That's none of your business. <gasps> Probably all the memories related to her. <laughs> the expression on his face is clouded. For a few moments, he's silent, thoughtful. I knew it. In the beginning, they were mostly of you. What? Bard glances away. I notice the way his fingers strum uneasily on his crane and stare. I've never seen Varg look like this. I carefully slide my way over to the edge of my bed, allowing my feet to dangle to the floor. Fritz cares for you, princess. Take my word for it, if no one else's. Why is he suddenly telling me all this? Will I ever see him again? Or has he lost to you? Varg flinches back from me, taking a few steps back to put some distance between the two of us. I can't say. I watch Varg closely. I never noticed before, but Varg's emotions are very clear if you know what to look for. Ooh. Should I press him? I don't know. I don't know. Does he want me to press him? I, I feel like he wants me to press him, right? You cannot say, or you won't say? Princess. The gentleness with which he says my title makes me think of Fritz. However, just as I'm beginning to hear Fritz's voice through him, his demeanor changes once again. The vulnerable man disappears and is replaced by the usual facade. Varg straightens and glares at me. He displays this confidence to hide his true emotions. It seems like he wears two masks. Ooh, okay, I answered right. Nice. You're more like Fritz than you would care to admit. Fritz would never harm me. 
like snarls, but he no longer intimidates me. <laughs> I just like have this image of Varg, like just like half heartedly like growling, like, <laughs> like trying to catch her off guard, but being unable to. <laughs> Fritz this, Fritz that. All you ever talk about is that idiot. Even though I've been the one by your side this entire time. Ooh! 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 Yes! Slay, Vark! Fritz is nothing compared to me. Ooh! I haven't seen the bad parts of Vark, so I kinda like him. Yeah, honestly, Vark... Vark has always done everything with Lucette in mind. Like, he's a Yandere. And that's part of the appeal. <laughs> Then why do you feel threatened by him? Because they're both in love with you! My words render Varg speechless. I dimly notice the patterns of red dawn scattered across my room. The sun is almost up. I look back to Varg, my eyes seeking Fritz. Varg moves, his eyes fierce as he closes the distance between us. Oh god, like, okay, so like, Varg having like feelings for Lucette because I'm I'm assuming he inherits the same feelings that Fritz had for Lucette and like developed his own sense of feelings for Lucette that were maybe a bit more twisted and then seeing that like Lucette only wants to see Fritz probably strengthens his like anger against Fritz too so like that might also be part of why he wants to overtake Fritz so that like she won't see him and like fall for him instead. I don't know. Edgy. Oh! 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 oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Damn! Damn! Vark presses his lips to mine, effectively stifling the rest of the word. <laughs> Ooh, I felt it coming, but yeah. <laughs> spicy, very spicy. Let's go. I have only a moment to gasp out for breath before Varg kisses me again, more deeply. I raise my hands to push him away for a brief second as my mind hazes over in shock. Varg takes advantage of my confusion and moves forward again, an unreadable expression in his eyes as he leans over me. I try to pull away, but... Vark tangles his hand in my hair, tilting my head back to press his lips firmly against mine once more. Damn! No, this is not right! I tremble as his free arm sweeps down my back and eventually comes to rest at my, ri at my waist. Why is he kissing me? He doesn't even like me! <laughs> wow, intense kissing. Very intense. Also, I think he does like you. I think that's the point of the kiss, Lucette. <laughs> Anger clears my mind. I ball my hands into fists and shove at Varg's chest. Okay, like, for one, Varg's been here like the entire week by Lucette's side. He could have been gone and just doing his duties. That shows that he feels something for Lucette. And then this, just like... His eyes are bright and out of focus when I'm able to look into them. His chest betrays his labored breathing. I heard intense sipping and was about to say, yes, I'm here. I now realize you said kissing. <laughs> no, I'm not here. I wipe the back of my hand against my mouth as I glare at Varg. I do not trust myself to speak without screaming at him. Coherence slowly starts to filter back into his gaze. I can see the awareness in his gaze, along with guilt. I'm debating between being like, ooh, and being like, ooh, yeah. Like, oh my god, like, this whole situation, I'm just like, tapping my hands, but also being like, don't do that. I slowly realize that my cheeks are now wet with tears. Why am I crying? Varg takes a step towards me. Though he does not utter a single word, I can see from his body language that he means to apologize. Um. He reaches a hand out as if to touch my face. No! I move back and close my eyes. Uh, I feel bad for Varg. Uh. 
I feel bad for both of them, but... Oh, God. How do you va? The Lucette? I open my eyes when I hear the familiar voice and watch as Fritz quickly rushes to my side and kneels in front of me. His hands cut my face as his thumbs brush against my cheeks, wiping away the tears that I cannot stop. What did he do, princess? Fritz. I feel suddenly overwhelmed, like there's too much whirling in my mind. I'm not sure how long we sit there together. I feel short, like a single moment. It could have been an eternity. I'm sorry, princess. I shake my head in an attempt to clear my fractured thoughts. Fritz frowns, but the expression clears as he brushes my hair away from my face. His fingertips gently trace my cheek as he speaks. I failed as your knight. I should never have left you alone that night. I could have stopped all of this from happening. All I've done is cause you pain. This past week has been hell. I, I didn't know if you'd wake up or if I would be able to be with you when you did. He looks at me, his expression grim. And I wasn't there when you did. Fark was. Okay, so he knows his name. I wasn't actually sure if he knew his name yet or not. You... You finally know about him? Fritz nods as he gives me a pained smile. No apology could ever be enough to excuse what I did to you. Wait, does he- did he regain memories? Or did someone tell him? I doubted you that night because I thought what you were saying was impossible. I wondered how I could be cursed without knowing about it. But now, I hate myself for treating you the way I did. I must have put you through so much suffering because I did not believe you. I know I've never been worthy of you, but now I've betrayed the trust you had in me. He drops his hands and pulls away from me. I don't think I have the right to be called your knight. I reached out and grabbed his hand without thinking. Don't say that. Fitz looks at me in shock, his wide-eyed gaze only making me feel embarrassed, and I have to focus to keep from floundering. After a long moment, Fritz manages to smile at me. It's small, but genuine. I don't deserve your kindness. Kindness? Is that what this is? <laughs> I don't know what kindness is, my dude. We sit together in silence for some time, enjoying each other's calming presence. My room is quiet as the sun suddenly starts to rise. Do you know what has happened during the last week? I'm afraid not. I wasn't myself for most of it. He's fading even faster now. And just when I feel that I've truly started to know him. That explains so much, Elio, of what you meant Lucette doesn't. Sorry. What do you mean? I don't know kindness? What? I'm a very kind person. I've already told you about the disappearance of the prince and the princess, but it seems like the queen has gone missing as well. Oh, Ophelia is missing. Oh, I, I thought, I thought he was talking about my mom. Yeah, you're kind, kind of a simp. Why? Why? I mean, you're right, but why? I can only hope that they made it out alive and that Rod led them back to the Marchen. There, they will be safe. Okay, so it, it's Rod's mom that escapes, not, not my mom. I did not think I would ever trust anyone there. I still don't, but... Rafei said that the Marchen is a place evil cannot overtake. And whether or not Varg is truly evil, his mission is to kill them. I can at least be sure Parfait will protect them. King Gennaro is still here, but he is different. He's not himself. Oh? And... What happened? It's your mother. Okay, our mom is back. She probably put like a Yondere spell on <laughs> Lucette's dad, because from what I recall, she was very Yondere towards our dad. The day you fainted, that same morning, your mother returned. 
can only stare at Fritz in shock, knowing that what happened that night wasn't just a dream. Everyone in the castle is acting as if nothing is wrong. It's like the last four years haven't happened. But the instant I saw her, I recognized her. And after that, well, I don't remember what came next. My next conscious moment was today, when I saw you. Fritz raises his hand as if to touch my face, but he abruptly pulls it away. Ah, please! Don't beat yourself up, baby! He flinches, then doubles over, his face contorting with pain. Oh, is Varg trying to take over? No, not now. I won't let you. His eyes are cloudy, his gaze turned inward. He's speaking to the other side of himself that I cannot see. I reach out to him and try to call him back. Fritz! He looks up at me and attempts a sad smile. He's trying to make it seem like he's fine. Ah. When he speaks, it's through gritted teeth. I'll never let him hurt you. Can you trust me? About that, at least. Yes. Lucette. Oh, shit! Black's like, you'll, you'll keep me from hurting her? Fuck you. The shadows dance around him, almost tauntingly at first. Then they simply engulf him and Fritz disappears into darkness. I take a step back. I hate to interrupt. You again. I snarl at him, but Varg merely shrugs. He looks indifferent, as if what transpired between us before never happened. I have things to do today. Shit, okay. <laughs> He's just like, fucking us up with that. Oh, you'll, you'll protect her. Nope. Varg turns away and walks briskly out of my room without glancing back. Okay. <laughs> I make my way through the hallways of the palace, determined to find Sir Mithros. Over the past few months, I've been all but invisible to the people in the palace. It allowed me to pass undisturbed. I'd always figured it was because no one remembered who I was with my curse. But today, things are different. A maid sweeping the hallways jumps at the sight of me before quickly curtsying. Your Highness! Hey, I, I can go used to this! Maids at my beck and call? You know, maybe it's not so bad reviving my mom. Her eyes are downcast. She does not look up at me as I pass by her. As I walk past her, two other servants heading in my direction also move to the side of the hallway. Your Highness. Your Highness. Uh, the gardener can leave. Just leave me with the maids, okay? They remember who I am now? Did Varg just reset himself? Yeah, I think Varg was like, oh, overtook Fritz's, like, I think he's stronger than Fritz. Possibly his intense emotions are strong. That makes him like easier to take over. But how? Has my curse somehow been broken? I spend the entire morning searching for Sir Mithros, but he's nowhere to be found. The only room I have yet to search is a throne room. I, I, I'm not sure if it's confirmed or not, but I have a feeling the more intense emotions which personality feels, the more likely that personality will take over. Because Fritz took over during moments when Lucette really needed help and he has like intense feelings for Lucette. But like, when Fritz was doing things with Lucette, that made Varg feel jealous. It seemed more likely for him to take over because he has feelings for Lucette. <laughs> I push open the doors and walk inside. There I'm met with an unexpected sight. The king sits on his throne, his posture regal, but his eyes downcast. Your majesty? He does not look up when I enter, but I can see that his eyes are stony and moving. When Fritz was doing things with Lucette, lewd. <laughs> Fritz is not that type of guy. He's a gentleman. Varg, on the other hand. 
I approached him cautiously, and upon closer look, I noticed how his eyes look so empty. It's almost as if he cannot see me. I inhale, and something catches in my throat. My heart begins to beat rapidly. What have they done to you? My princess. I whirl around and see Sir Mithros approaching me with a smile. Where did he come from? A gentleman who made a booba sandwich with his arms? Exactly! That's because he didn't want to touch the booba! Because he's a classy, classy man! He's like, I could reach my arms around her and put my arms around her booba to like restrain her, but no, no, I'm not I'm not built that way. Varg is built that way. <laughs> I could have sworn there was no one else here when I entered. He didn't want to touch the booba. Didn't want to is a strong word. Okay, he had the self-restraint to not touch the booba. I is that better? <laughs> Sir Mithros. I was just on my way to see you. Like told me you had awakened. What's wrong with the king? Physically, there's nothing wrong with him at all. Mentally, though. Anger begins to burn within me. I don't know if it's better, but it's certainly more accurate. <laughs> you swore that you wouldn't harm him. Is he not alive, my princess? Take a good look at him. The king is completely unharmed. <laughs> yeah, of course you would do that fucking little, little loophole. Oh yeah, I didn't harm him, but he, I mean, he's still alive. Like, I, I harmed him mentally, but he's not harmed physically. That's what you meant, right? <laughs> I like to imagine Varg is pretending the kiss didn't happen to not feel awkward, lol. Yeah, I can only imagine the level of rejection he's feeling right now from how Lucette reacted to that, so... I can only imagine how awkward he feels right now, uh. The change in Sir Mithros' expression is subtle, but I can feel the malice in his gaze. I should add that it was difficult to keep this promise, princess. My queen will be having words with you about this. Oh shit. I'm gonna see mommy? Mother. Where is she? She has left the palace for the time being. You've been unconscious for a week. My queen cannot spend every moment fretting by your bedside. But didn't Varg say he was the one to stay by my side? Yeah, Varg is more of a mom than our own mom was. I shake the thought from my mind. When will I be seeing her? At dinner, I assume. Now, if that's all... Wait. Not too complicated. <laughs> Sir Mithras pauses abruptly to look at me. The servants I met in the hallway seem to remember me. How? Uh, I'm, well, I don't think the curse has been lifted yet, so I'm guessing they're cursed now. Hi, Elio. Hey, chat. How's everyone doing today? Hi, Glitched. I'm doing okay. Hi. <laughs> I stayed up late last night, so I just woke up, like, not too long ago myself. <laughs> How you doing? You really cannot guess. He sighs as he runs a hand through his hair. When you turned 18 and became the Tenebrarum Bearer, the curse that the Lesser Witch cast on you broke. Oh, okay. Wait, Elio, are you a witch? How... Why, why are you asking me that? What? 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 What is the catalyst to make you ask me that, huh? What? Because I um, are you implying I cur I put curses on people? What? Moments before your mother woke, you were the strongest witch in all of Angiel. A lesser witch's spell could not have any effect over you. Oh, nice! We don't gotta do good deeds then. Congratulations, princess. You are no longer a victim of the curse. Your life is back to the way it was before. Well, if you're not, then the reason you remember Lucette is because you're cursed, which checks out. <laughs> but 
that she broke the curse, so I'm not cursed. Huh. Now, is there anything else you would like to ask me? Yes, there is. About Fritz. Ooh, okay. Okay, so these are both the same question, but the way they're worded, I think, is important here. I think telling someone else to remove his curse is not good. The fact is that we want to break his curse is probably the choice that I'm supposed to go with here. Much to my astonishment, Sir Mithras begins to laugh. The sound is cruel, and so sharp and deadly it cuts through whatever hope had been forming in my heart. You never forgot. What? I'm not doing too well. Me and Error had an argument. In a way, what time did you wake up? Because I'm pretty sure we're in different time zones. I woke up at 2 p.m. PST. But I'm sorry to hear about you and Error having an argument. Hope you guys can make up soon. You wish to break his curse? Oh, princess, you should have told me earlier you cared so much about the boy. Yeah, also, what is this fairy tale curse? Can you please tell me that? Perhaps then I would have tailored his curse to your requirements. Eh? Poor, upstanding, chivalrous Fritz. In many ways, he was too much of a knight for his father's liking. Sir Mithras leans closer to me. So close I can see a crazed gleam in his eyes. Back the fuck away! Would you like to know why I cursed him, princess? Yes, and please tell me what the curse is, please. I am dying to know. I remain rooted in place, but not flinching away from Mithros is harder than I would have thought. Sir Alcaster approached his son for help, expecting him to help kill the king and take over the throne, but Fritz refused. Sir Alcaster needed an obedient servant, and Fritz deserved to be punished for stepping out of line. I know we'll make up. We always do. And 2 p.m. isn't so late. That's good. <laughs> but at the same time, I know my family would be like, no, 2 p.m. is very late. <laughs> no. And so I removed those memories of Alcaster, telling Fritz of his devious plans, and gave him the curse. Fritz has... Oh! Fritz has the Little Red Riding Hood curse. There is, after all, no better servant than the Big Bad Wolf. Okay, I was right! I was right! It was Little Red Riding Hood curse! Okay, so we got two wolves. Okay, we got, we got two furries. <laughs> I'll be your servant, Elio. <laughs> Will you be the Big Bad Wolf? He has all the power and drive of a predator, but is still so obedient. Wolves are closely related to dogs, after all. Also, oh, that's how their curses are linked. Yeah, okay. Better yet, the big bad wolf will always stay close to the lady he desires to devour. Ooh! <laughs> I like how he's not even, not even hiding that. Yo, yo. Varg is Vorg, let's go! He wants to devour me? Let's go! I always knew it. I always knew it. I always knew it! Thank you for the meal! I am the meal. I can feel disgust seething in my stomach. I've created the perfect servant for Sir Alcaster. In short... Sir Mithra suddenly reaches out a hand to grab my face by the chin. He forces my head up at a painful angle. What you doing, bruh? <laughs> there is no breaking his curse, princess. Not unless Fritz is somehow able to mentally overpower Varg. Heh? Oi, oi, oi. I just remembered some dwarf barking when Varg first showed up. Wait, some dwarf? I don't... I don't think some dwarf barks. God. <laughs> Do you mean Jackie? I feel like Jackie was definitely the one barking. <laughs> I don't know. My, the feeling I get from some dwarf is like he would not bark. <laughs> Why would I do that? I think two people did it. 
I think it was Jackie and Goldie, if Goldie was there for when Vark showed up. Which checks out, they, they both have played this game. <laughs> but also, they're simping. But also, <laughs> that's funny to know now. And we all know how formidable Varg is. Sir Mithros releases me. Now put the idea out of your pretty little head. But yes, in any case, I now realize they were playing us. I regret to inform you I am unfortunately cishet twice. <laughs> but yes, yes, they, they, they were... Well, I think they were both doing it because they simp for Varg, but also... Being a little cheeky about it. <laughs> that is very unfortunate, some dwarf. Yeah, I'm sorry for your affliction, some dwarf. See you, Elio. Bye bye, chat. Have a lovely time in stream and have a great day, everyone. See you later, Glitch! I can cause him ever I see him. I can be objective, but weren't me. <laughs> now put the idea out of your pretty little head. Don't you already have everything you've ever wanted? He smiles wily before turning and walking out of the throne room, leaving me alone and trembling. To break the curse, Fritz has to overthrow Varg? In his own mind? A sudden cold descends upon me. I wrap my arms around myself and shudder. Is it bad that I don't want Fritz to overtake Varg? Like, I want them to kind of coexist. Maybe it's because I like um, Ukyo, and I actually really like the the duality between like dark ukyo and like uh light light ukyo i i really like that so i hope i hope that doesn't happen personally but like i, I wouldn't mind if it happens just because i want them to be happy but at the same time i do like the whole you know i turn to look at the king but he's not moved since my encounter with sir mithros your Majesty, did I do this to you? Mother. Yeah, I'm the same. It also feels bad to have Varg go away. Like, like Varg has feelings and desires of his own now, so I don't want him to leave either. Like, it would feel bad. If she were here, she could make sense of it for me. Mother, where are you? I stare at my now trembling hands. This is not what I wanted at all. Princess, we cannot! I am the crown princess! Which is why we cannot allow you to leave on your own, your highness. It is strange to think just a few mo months ago, these same men did everything they could to keep me out of the palace. Your highness, you'll need an escort if you want to leave. I can take care of myself. Back to being a nuisance, I see. Oh, he's got his mask back on. Oh, and that, that makes sense why he's got the wolf on the cane, because he's the big bad wolf. <laughs> Sir! They know who he is? I watch in stunned silence as both soldiers salute to Varg. Varg turns a smirk at me. Well, what's going on here? The princess wishes to leave the palace to visit the town. The wolf on the cane? <laughs> I want to say something to that, Twy, but you know I can't say something to that. You know I can't say something to that, because that's spoilers for a certain game. How dare you do that to me? Does she know? I can feel Varg's eyes on me, but I refuse to look at him. Don't you smiley emoji at me, Twy! Fine, I will accompany her. But the queen said... The words die in the man's throat as Varg turns to glower at him. His eyes flash with impatience, and it's enough to coax the soldier into silence. <laughs> yeah, you better be crying! <laughs> Open the gates. Yes, sir. The gates swing open. I rush out, thinking that maybe if I move fast enough, I can lose Varg. 
You better be crying. Sorry, bully boy. <laughs> so, what are we here for? Though I tried my hardest to shake him, Bark is still irritatingly close. It's impossible to leave him. Can I also smiley emoji? Yeah, you can smiley emoji, Kit Bees. You're not doing it facetiously like Twy over there. <laughs> Princess. Bark leans out and wraps his fingers around my elbow, pulling me to a stop in the shadows of an alleyway. <clears throat> my irritation is immediate, and I look up to glare at him. Not sure why. Hey, that's me. I'm Twy over there. <laughs> yeah. Twy is doing a, a certain joke and thought it was funny to do the joke when I can't even talk about it. Because <laughs> it's spoilers for a game I'm playing. What are we doing in town? As much as I don't want to agree with those idiot knights, you really shouldn't be wandering the streets. My next words are cold and sharp. Why not? Before, that was what everyone insisted I do. Now the only thing everyone wants is for me to stay indoors. Varg is silent for a few moments before finally letting out an exasperated sigh. NGL is not what it was, princess. What are you talking about? Varg places his hands on my shoulders and turns me so that I'm looking out onto the streets. This is... I'm not overly familiar with the kingdom, but even I can tell that something is off. Now everyone wants me to stay indoors. Yes, Lucette, social distancing. They didn't know what COVID was, but now they know. Good on them. The shops that once had colorful display windows are now empty. Their displays are null or non-existent. Wow, this comparison to COVID really is... <laughs> accurate. The liveliness of the market stalls is all but gone. My gaze is drawn to the bakery shop that Fritz had taken me all those months ago. Its dim windows tell me that it's closed. When you voice them saying princess though, oh, do I, do I say it good? <laughs> do you guys like when I say princess in his voice? There are so many different sweets here. Buy whatever you like. Are you certain? Absolutely. I know nothing makes you happier than a good pastry. How did you know that? Well, it's a knight's job to know these sorts of things. Just how much do you know about me? I know when you go to sleep, what you brush your teeth with, what, what your favorite food is. Oh, n n nothing. Nothing that anyone else would know. That's because you sound like both, and I like the fusion. Oh, nice. I'm glad you caught on to that then. <laughs> what, you brush your teeth with a toothbrush? <laughs> What's my favorite color? Blue. My favorite flower? Lilies. <laughs> I told you that these croissants are famous, right? Those are my favorite. Oh, uh, will they become her favorite because they're Fritz's favorite? That would be cute. I, I always like when, when someone is like, Hey, this game is my favorite. Or, hey, this thing is my favorite. And then the person checks it out and it becomes their favorite because it's associated with someone. It's so nice. I'll get a croissant then. Am I, am I like that for anyone? Did you know that bunnies can hop up to three feet? Four if they are sufficiently determined enough. Now imagine how much higher they could go if they were given bun nip. <laughs> I feel like such a degenerate because when I read bun nip, I thought you meant nipples. But it's cat nip. <laughs> Hi, Barn. Hi. Also nice. I can jump to be like twice my height. Let's go. Elio, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a degenerate. Not a custard Danish? I thought you liked those best. She's trying it because you like it, Fritz. 
uh... A croissant, of course. Right away. That's cute. That is cute. She tried it because it's his favorite. Yeah, I deserve a bonk for that one. <laughs> An all too familiar ache beats within my chest. Has it been that long since that day? Everything was so vibrant and full of energy back then. This place was so lively. And there was music that filled the streets and performances everywhere, but now... So much has changed. It's so silent. That's what a pandemic does, Lucette! Degenerates like you belong on a cross. Legionnaire. Fallout. New Vegas. <laughs> Degenerates like you deserve to burn in hell. Snaz. Undertale. But also, you totally never made me read Spyx Family and Oshinoko. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know. I'm glad to know. <laughs> I get you guys to check out things I like because I like them. Is that, is that the message here? The streets are so empty and the eyes of the people. Their eyes are glazed and unseen, just like the king's. I step forward to get a better look without realizing. I am only dimly aware of Varg's hands, which have not moved from my shoulders. I would never be influenced by a bun into liking his favorite things. Please don't look at my last played game on Steam. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, what's that? Dot hack do you? Last recode? <laughs> what happened? The queen happened. But the people... She can take control and can demand obedience, but she can't force love or loyalty. The people of Angiel are being crushed, princess, and they know who's responsible for it. I mean, I read those on my own, so... <laughs> you got very good taste, Kit Bees. Vark's voice is hushed, but he still draws stares. I flinch back at the expressions on the people's faces as they look at us. There's fear in their eyes. I instinctively retreat until I fall back into Varg. His hands tighten on my shoulders. Bro, those hurt. They know that you're her daughter. I'm trying to think if I've gotten you with the Uno reverse card on liking things I like simply because I liked them. I can't think of anything, so therefore there is nothing. I played Devil of the Mirror recently, Barnhouse. I played Zero Escape. Yeah, Zero Escape. I really want to play Zero Escape with you, Barn. Please, when are you available to play Zero Escape? I played Imaginary Friends because of you, Barn. <laughs> These are the looks they've always given me. This is why they feared me. I bought I the Somnium Files because of you, Barn. I mean, I haven't played much of it, but I got it because of you. Mostly because I want to stream it, and I don't know when to stream it. <laughs> Probably when I beat Danganronpa. Abruptly, Varg draws his cape around me, enclosing me in darkness. When light finally filters back into my consciousness, I'm facing a completely different street. Sorry, I think you have me mistaken for an influencer, of which I am not. You are an influencer though, Barn. You're like Miss Worldwide, influencing everyone. Zero Escape 4, Barn. <laughs> Barn has to escape from all the requests to play Zero Escape with him. <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> no, Vine, that was a threat. There is zero escape, Vine. <laughs> you cannot escape the desires of the masses, Vine. Someday, we will play Virtue's Last Reward. Smoke and mirrors. Things might have gotten out of hand back there, so I got us out. He suddenly releases me and nudges me forward. Can we return to the palace now? I'm not trapped in chat with you. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> I grip my teeth. I still want to see the town. 
Is it impossible to think that the entire place is so changed? How is that possible? Sir Mithro said Mother was out. I really need to see her. It's almost dinner time, Princess. Your family will be expecting you. Mother will be expecting me. I should see her at dinner. Right? Thinking about everything that's transpired exhausts me. I rub my eyes and sigh. Fine, let us return. But we like being with you, Barn. We do. You're very fun to have around, Barn. No matter what I may say otherwise. When I enter the dining hall, a familiar figure stands by one of the windows. Alright, but I think that is gonna be it for Cinderella Phenomenon. Because slicing this together with the previous part, this will be like two hours. Lots of rendering needs to be done. So I think I'll end there for Cinderella Phenomenon. And then I'll do a BRB. Uh, and then do Little Nightmares. He compliments Barn. This is the first sign of Ragnarok. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you guys.